All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show at Levi Stadium after the 49ers began training camp today. They don't actually hit the field until tomorrow, but today we got a chance to sit down with Nick Bosa, with George Kittle, and with John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan and talk through um, a number of things. And why don't we start with Bosa? Um, you know, it was it was interesting. Nick Bosa is you know he's, he's got a, he's got a new mustache. And uh, he said, man, I've been rocking it in the off season. He said he gets bored in the off season. He was asked about the D-line room. He said he really likes the development of the young edge rushers, most likely talking about guys like Robert Beal and Drake Jackson. He said that, um, that Leonard Floyd looks great and that they had a great D-line dinner before they took a break for 40 days to try to get to, you know, get the new guys. There's a lot of new faces, I think five or six new faces in that D-line room. So they're just trying to build on that rapport and Bosa said they had a great dinner before they left for their 40 day vacation. He said he has talked to Ayuk this off season, uh, but not for a while. Um, he says he doesn't pay att attention to the criticism uh, from people who offer criticism for anybody who holds out. He said, I just ignored it. He said, I ignored it last year and Brandon probably should ignore it this year. Um, he said he talked to Dre Greenlaw and he said that Greenlaw is progressing and sticking with his rehabilitation plan. Um, and then I asked him about his off-season workouts, um, if he did anything different. And he just said, you know, after you play a 20-week season and you go to the Super Bowl, you got to take it slow after a long year. So he said, me and Joey did a lot of really good things together, getting ready for the season. He works out with his brother. Uh, but he said he kind of took, took it slow after uh, playing that much football. He said, you need to take it slow after you play 20 weeks. Um, and then he said, um, you know, he was asked, you know, the, the old question, you know, will, you know, does it go through your head? Will you ever win a Super Bowl when you lose, you know, now your second Super Bowl? And he admitted, yeah, it does. Um, that it creeps into your thinking a little bit after you lose the Super Bowl. It's like, when is it our turn? Uh, he said he loves his schedule where he spends half the year in Florida, half the year in California. Um, I asked him if he talks to his dad at all or if Joey talks to his dad about D-line play. And he said that, you know, my dad gives me his observations, but the game's changed so significantly since he played. Um, he was asked about Drake Jackson specifically, who's rehabbing. He says he's doing great. He says it's lonely when you're injured in the, in the training room all day and the team's out on the field. But he said Drake's doing great. Um, and he was asked about the thought of, you know, possibly playing with Joey and, and having them, you know, reunited on the 49ers. Um, and he said he did think about it. Uh, he said it was fun to think about, but ultimately that Joey wanted to show loyalty to the Chargers, the only team that he's, he's known ever since he's been in the NFL. Um, he was asked about if he's, if he's going to watch the Olympics. He says he doesn't watch a lot of the Olympics, but he enjoys gymnastics and soccer. And then he was asked if he's been watching the receiver Netflix uh, documentary, and he said he hadn't been. So then we got a chance to talk to George Kittle. Uh, Kittle said his off season has been wonderful. Um, and he said that, you know, he obviously had some injuries and it prevented him from lifting. And he got from his playing weight of 242 to 245 in that range, all the way down to 214 pounds. And he joked that his wife looked at him and said, what are you? <laughs> what are you right now? Uh, but he said he's back up to 242 and ready for camp. Um, he says he loses weight, you know, if he stops lifting, which, you know, really is, you know, that's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys who their walk around weight is 20, 30 pounds shy of their playing weight. And they need to do a lot of lifting to maintain weight. And George just happens to have one of those type bodies. Uh, he was asked about tight end U and what he got out of tight end U. He said he talks to a lot of tight ends about how to take care of your body in the off season, little tricks of the trade. Um, he said he's a big fan of the Netflix uh, series receiver. He said him and his wife have been watching it quite a bit. Um, he said he's really determined to get back to the Super Bowl after losing two. He said losing two Super Bowls is not fun. Um, and then he just mentioned how the 49ers have kept the entire offense together, so he feels really good about that. Um, he was asked if he goes back and watches Super Bowl 58, and of course all the players will watch it at least once. But he's like, no, I do not spend my offseason re-watching over and over again Super Bowl 58. Uh, he asked. He was asked about, have you spoken to Ayuk? He said, I have spoken to him a couple of times. He said, I, he, he admitted, Kittle admitted that he said he hated the contract process. 
Um, and then it was helpful for him to talk to other guys like Richard Sherman about like what they've gone through and, and just trying to keep, you know, a level head. Um, Kittle also said that he loves Nate's uh, Nick Sorensen um, as the first year defensive coordinator. Uh, he talked about going to CMC's, CMC's wedding. He said he'd never been to Rhode Island before. And then when he was asked about Shanahan's mustache, he said, I told him to keep it. Um, but obviously Shanahan opted not to keep it. And then we had a chance to talk to uh, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, and they came out and gave us the news first, which was that Drake Jackson, Talanoa Fonga, Dre Greenlaw, and Ricky Pearsall all will begin this camp not practicing. Jackson, Afonga, Greenlaw on the pup list. Um, Ricky Pearsall has got a hamstring deal and he's on the NFI list because uh, he hurt his hamstring when he was not here at the facility and that's why he's on the non-football injury list. Um, and of course, Lynch got a lot of questions about Brandon Ayuk. He said, we, you know, he said, a lot of people said, hey, you know, Brandon Ayuk, supposedly you're going to report today. He's like, we expect all of our players to report. Uh, he said that they've started this negotiation early with IU, that they've had excellent communication throughout. Um, and, um, you know, he was asked, you know, will you restructure his deal like you did with Raheem Mostert? And he said all things are on the table at this point. He won't, ta he won't discount any angle or option. Um, and, you know, he was asked about – you know, if he's concerned, or Shanahan was asked about if Shanahan's concerned that Ayuk, you know, may be rusty or may, there may be a negative impact of missing practice time. And he said he's always concerned. He says he's always concerned anytime players miss time that they're going to fall out of rhythm and, and, and lose effectiveness. Um, I mentioned to John Lynch that last year um, he basically stated Nick Bosa unequivocally will not be traded. He's like, absolutely guaranteed that Nick would not be traded. And I said, would you offer that same um, guarantee about to Brandon Ayuk? And he laughed and he thought about it for a second. And he said, there are no absolutes there. So um, he said, Brandon's a part of our team. He's a big part of our team. We love him. We want him. We're trying to re-sign him. But he would not guarantee. Last year, before I could even get the question out, I'm like, John, is there any chance that you would entertain a trade for Nick Bosa? Before I could even say Bosa, he was like, no, absolutely not. We will not entertain any trades. He would not go that far this time with Brandon Ayuk. He said there are no absolutes. So what does that tell you? It tells you that there is a possibility that this thing does not come together or if this thing is not going to come together, that they could pull the trigger and trade Ayuk. So I think that that was a very clear, very clear message from today. I thought that was one of the most significant things to come out of today's presser is that unlike last year with Bosa, where he guaranteed he would not be traded, he would not make that guarantee with Brandon Ayuk. I thought that was really interesting. Um, Shanahan mentioned how he has a personal relationship with all of us, all the players. Uh, he says he's got a lot of love for BA, but that can only go so far. Um, Shanahan said it's a business. So, I mean, the Niners are pretty locked in on, on trying to, you know, maintain that this is a business and that they don't want to, you know, they can do whatever they want, but they want to make sure that they, that everybody knows that this is absolutely a business. And, and that's just the way it has to be. Um, John admitted that the negotiation has been very challenging, um, that they started early and they, they didn't expect it to be this challenging, but it has been this challenging. And, um, he, you know, Lynch just maintained as people kind of ask different questions about the negotiations. He said, We're, we've tried diligently to get this thing done and they badly want to get it done. Um, Kyle admitted, by the way, at the end of the presser that he shoved, shaved his mustache yesterday, that his wife liked it and that he knew that we were going to give him a bunch of grief about it. So he shaved it yesterday. Uh, Lynch says, um, you know, as far as the negotiation with any player, not just IU, He's like, you know, I've been in their shoes. I've been a player. And I think that definitely helps um, knowing that he's kind of knows what process they're going through and what insecurities they may be going through, what thoughts they may be going through. I think it's good that Lynch is a former player. Um, he, you know, he was asked about the fact that there's a lot of other receivers seeking new deals this offseason. And does that impact things? And he kind of 
said, you know, he kind of hemmed and hawed on that. He didn't say that it necessarily had a big impact. Um, he's like, both sides have to agree to get a deal. I mean, it sounds simple enough, something that we would all know, but it's true. I mean, they just have not been able to get on the same page. Um, he was asked about Ricky Pearsall's hamstring, and um, they said that he's likely to miss a block of days. They define a block as four days. So there's four days, and then there's an off day. Every four days, there's practice, and then there's an off day. So they call it four-day blocks. So Pearsall with the hamstring is going to miss the initial block. Uh, and that's just an estimate, and they have no idea where it's going to go from there. But he will not be out on the field to start training camp tomorrow, uh, at least for the first three or four days. Um, you know, John was asked, you know, hey, you know, you seem like you're taking your time with this. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm actually really impatient. Um, I don't like to take a long time with these extensions and these negotiations. I'm impatient. I like to get it done. Um Kyle said that it was very important for the Niners to get the CMC extension done. And obviously we know the importance of CMC to this roster. Um, the guys were asked, you know, both Kyle and John were asked if, if Ayuk showing up was an optimistic sign um, that maybe a deal is imminent. And he said, we'll continue to work to find a resolution. But he, he wouldn't say one way or another that they were, you know, that Ayuk showing up you know, really had any meaning. Uh, he did mention, Lynch mentioned that Kittle and, and Mooney Ward and Jake Brendel, who all had injuries and surgeries in the offseason, are all 100% coming into camp. They may be given rest days, but they're a full go to start practice tomorrow. Um, and, you know, as far as, um, oh, they asked Lynch if he has a timeline. You know, do you have a timeline for getting the Ayuk deal done? He's like, yeah, yesterday. So, in other words, he has no timeline. He's just trying to get it done as fast as possible. He was asked about uh, Josh Dobbs and Brandon Allen, and sure enough, or Kyle was, and he's, Kyle said, yeah, they're, those two guys are going to share um, um, practice reps as the second quarterback, so they will compete for that number two job. Um, he was asked about Brock Purdy. Kyle was, and he said, hey, man, it's great to have him 100% healthy. Last year, you know, it was just, it was just uh, film work and no field work. And now this year they can do film work and field work. And obviously that's a huge, huge thing. And then Kyle was asked how he spent the 40 days off and what he got out of the 40 days off. And he just said he's been enjoying time with his family and morning walks with his family. And, and you know, it's like it's funny. He's like, you know, my family's ready for me to come back to work and I'm ready to come back to work. And it, it, it really is, you know, the football life of a player is, you know, for a family, is, it's, it's tough. But for coaches, I mean, these guys work 100-hour weeks. Um, and they're, they're, they have to almost be protected from themselves. So this period of time between when minicamp ends and when training camp begins is probably the biggest, most normal family time they get, right? And I'm sure they go on vacations and spend all kinds of family time. And, and the family pays a price. You know, the family pays a price for being an NFL coach. There's a lot of time at the facility. There's a lot of time away from your family. So it was good to see Kyle say that he got some quality time. And John said they got some quality time with their families because this thing's a grind, man. I mean, let's be honest. The Super Bowl is like February 10th or something like that next year. Today is, you know, mid to late July. I mean, they, these guys are going to grind 100-hour weeks every single week between now and February the 10th. So, or February whatever, whenever the Super Bowl is, if they're in it this year, and hopefully they will be. So um, it's a grind and you need to take that time for your families. And they do in this 40 day period between mini camp and OTAs and the beginning of training camp. So you guys are fully updated. We'll do full recaps on every practice, every presser, um, you know, we'll grind. The Krug Show will grind for all you guys. So um, it's a labor of love. It's something we love doing. Um, we'll be here for every day of training camp. We'll bring you every press conference. We'll bring you footage and clips and highlights of every camp practice. Um, we'll give you full recaps of every single day from Santa Clara. And, uh, and then, you know, put on suntan lotion and get out here and do it again, all again the next day. So uh, it's a busy time for the Krug Show. It's a busy time for the channel. Kev's back from Europe. So uh, I've got him on my side to help me through it. 
and uh, I'm fired up, fired up. We've got some big things to announce here in the coming days. Uh, we'll just say it, leave it at that. We won't say exactly what it is, but we've got some big things coming up, uh, coming down the pike. Look for that. And thanks to uh, Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. And this video brought to you by Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles. They're at 205 Cypress Avenue in Pacific Grove, California, on the Monterey Peninsula. Call my good friend Anthony Catania. He's at 831-521-5264. Thanks for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube. Tomorrow's first day of camp. I'll be out on the field telling you what I see. It's going to be a great year. Looking forward to it. Thanks for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.